Well, I guess you could say it's in my blood. As a child, when I was about five years old, my, my dad told me I was a descendant of William Clark. And uh, of course, I was five, I didn't know what he was talking about. He said he was an explorer. I said, oh, what does that mean? You know, he went camping? He's like, yeah. And I, I said, what do you, you know, where'd he go camping? Out west, you know? I, I, I said, can we go there? You know, he said, no, son. I said, why not, Dad? And he, he, he said, because it's, it, it's a really long camping trip. I said, so what, we go on long camping trips, why can't we do it? And he said, no, it's a really long trip, son. I said, I'm gonna do it, Dad. And then by the time high school came around, I realized the bicentennial was coming. So I thought that would be a good time to be on the trail. Just see the, the river eyes wide open for the first time, as much like William did as I can. So I, uh, I eventually wound up in a full-fledged reenactment and I spent two and a half years on the trail retracing William's footsteps. And in the process, I learned how to make these canoes and I paddled them for thousands of miles and I fell in love with them. For me, it's magical. And I, I, I always tell people these, these canoes have what I call dugout canoe magic. And everywhere you, you go when you're making them or paddling them for that matter, uh, they just, the people just are brought, they, they just come to the canoe and, uh, and they walk away smiling every time. And, and if I'm working on them, uh, I encourage people to chop and uh, especially the kids. I get lots of kids involved whenever I can. I do festivals and work with schools and, and tribes and everything. And, and it, it's just amazing. And it, it, it's, uh, it's, you know, people coming together to make something beautiful. Nadi, uh, very special. Parks and Rec um, uh, had to take the tree down uh, because they, they thought it was gonna fall on somebody's dog. It was right near a bike trail. And she was leaning over almost horizontal, still firmly rooted. And uh, um, she was very strong, but they, they were worried about her falling over. So they took her down. And uh, about 40 yards from the, from the river, I started carving on her, uh, all with hand tools. Chainsaw never touched this one, uh, mostly in ads, uh, curved blade ads. And it took me uh, about two and a half months to carve her out to about six or 700 pounds. And uh, I paddled her across Nebraska uh, on the Platte River, intending to go to New Orleans, but it was the year of the flood and they wouldn't let me on. So I carved another three or 400 pounds out of her and sent her up to Montana via Craigslist of all things. The first time I ever used it said, dugout canoe needs ride to Montana. And in three days, I got a ride from St. Louis to Montana, just like that. And then left her up there to, until I could actually do this journey. And I finally got in last year and started paddling. I just happened to be coming through Kansas City and, uh, and I run into you guys. And I, it was the craziest thing. Uh, that you all happen to be doing the shoot here at the same time as I'm coming through. I mean, there was no planning whatsoever. The timing was perfect. I just got to Kansas City yesterday and the shoot was today. And so we had time, we, we made a day to, to do this and uh, uh, be part of this wonderful film. And uh, I'm excited to see it. And I, I'm excited to learn more about the artist. But I'll tell you after, uh, after doing the journey uh, for two and a half years, it changed my life forever. And I, you know, I fell in love with the canoes. I love the water. I love paddling and love being out there in the middle of nowhere. And that, that's that's why I carve the canoes now and paddle them and share the stories because I want people to understand. You know, you, you, if you do some beautiful stuff and make make cool things together and bring smiles, man, that your whole world changes all around you. And Naughty's proof of that, <laughs> let me tell you.